Hi, everybody. This is Dr. Eliana Aaron. Today is July 20th, 2020. Um, and we're going to talk today about some of the fake news going around about masks. So many non-experts are quoting studies on the non-efficacy of masks. Uh, that means they're trying to tell you that masks don't work. The misinformation is circulating to the extent that it's actually mind-boggling. Um, basically, the average reader has a difficult time understanding the validity of what they are reading. So you have somebody who has a doctor in front of their name um, or someone who is a journalist, someone who is the you know, medical contributor for a, a newspaper, uh, but has no qualifications other than having, you know, the media card to get them in for, uh, for a meeting. Um, so the problem is that a lot of these people come in with an agenda. They're coming in with pre-decided conclusions to their argument. So we already know that uh, part of the problem going around the world right now is that free and open journalism has in many places ceased to exist. Journalists come in, they know what message they wanna give you, and then they find here and there a source or two or information to give people so that they are actually getting completely biased information. And it's very sad when this happens in terms of making medical decisions. So I've seen that a lot. I've seen it come out um, by non-clinicians and it's concerning. Many of the time, so I'm gonna give you some tips for distinguishing between real and not real so that you could be a more critical judge of what you are reading because I've had a lot of feedback from people very concerned about some of these articles. So the average readers do not necessarily understand that the author may not be an expert in this area, okay? Who is an expert in the area? Someone in public health, an epidemiologist, an infectious disease specialist. They know a lot about, you know, coronavirus, about spreading diseases and things like that. I have worked in this field, okay, for many years, and I've um, contributed to this field in many areas. Okay, a lot of people writing these summaries, if they are um, medical professionals, they are oftentimes radiologists, you know, the people who read x-rays. Um, I've seen orthopedists do it. Um, and I've seen people who are, you know, psychiatrists, psychologists, people who have nothing to do with this area at all, but who want to give an opinion. Um, and they're entitled to give their opinion, but not to pass it off as news. So I'm gonna explain that in a minute. A lot of the times they're quoting studies, not in their original form, but in their own interpretation of the study. Um, so that means that it's a heavily biased result, picking and choosing the sentence that they like and skipping very important facts. So when I see these articles, I actually delve into the sources and I look at the studies. Sometimes the studies are not legitimate. They're not peer reviewed. They are just very small studies that were done that are not considered significant by any scientific measure. Sometimes, and this was quite shocking, there was a popular study that was quoted um, as, and I'm quoting now several um, articles that were in the newspaper in popular media, um, and even sometimes written by people in the health or pseudo health profession or para health profession. So this is what's been circulating. There are side effects of wearing masks. That's what I've seen. So the actual journal article that this was based on, one of the journal articles this was based on, was published in the Acta Neurologica Scandinavica, which is a Scandinavian um, neurology uh, journal in 2006, and it showed a very small sample of people wearing N95 masks, which the public nowadays doesn't have access to, and that they were more likely to develop headaches when wearing them for long periods of time. 
So yeah, you can say that's a side effect, but they're generalizing it to all masks. Virtually nobody on the street right now in Israel or in most places of the world are walking around with an N95 mask. And if they did, that would be a really stupid use of the mask. It doesn't help in those situations. N95 mask is for healthcare workers who have very close contact with people who are contagious, respiratory contagious, okay? So this study does not apply to any of us, okay? And they're taking it and extrapolating the sentence here and the little bit here, brushing over the fact that this is not a cloth mask and this is not a surgical mask, which is what most of us wear. This is an N95 mask that almost none of us wear. So this is, a, this is the idea of um, taking a small piece of information from a non-reliable source, blowing it out of proportion to make people panic. Why do people want to do this? Headlines, downloads, popularity. People want to get clicked. People want to be the newscaster that everyone's looking, oh, look what she said. She said that, you know, that, that the masks are dangerous and they're gonna kill you. So everyone's clicking on it and looking at what she says. That's what they're looking for. And that's more important to them than providing legitimate news. This is dangerous when it comes to a pandemic because it makes people doubt and question whether what they are doing is helping them. And it makes them less careful. And being less careful during a pandemic could be deadly. So these heavily biased studies with predetermined conclusions are not scientific. A scientific study is, does not have a predetermined conclusion. We are doing a study to see what happens so that we can analyze the truth whichever direction it is. And sometimes you do a study and you find out it's exactly the opposite of what you thought and you publish it anyway. So a lot of these studies are not broad studies. There have been some studies that show that, um, that surgical masks are not great. Uh, that, that, well, I've seen, I've seen some, hold on. I've seen some studies about surgical masks decreasing your oxygenation level when you wear it for too long. Your oxygen level in your blood goes down. Now, if you actually read these studies, they're not studies. They're individual people. Sometimes they are the journalists themselves. I've seen these, and I've seen like 20 or 30 of them, at least, who walk around wearing a mask and test their own pulse oximetry. This is not a study, okay? I'm telling you, I have a pulse oximeter here, and if I breathe very deeply, the numbers are gonna go up. And if I breathe more shallowly, the numbers will go down. This has not been proven in any valid study. Absolutely not. What happens when you wear a surgical mask? You feel hot, yeah. You feel uncomfortable, yeah. Sometimes you feel restricted, especially when it's hot outside. You feel like, you know, I'm just not getting that deep breath of air that I like. So this is, by the way, this is the pulse oximeter. I'm gonna manipulate the data right now. Um, right now, I'm breathing pretty normally at room air, okay? I'm not, I'm talking a lot, but I'm at 98% um, oxygenation rate. And now I'm gonna start breathing more shallowly. And within a few minutes, you can see here it's 98%. And in a, in a couple of seconds, I'm gonna start breathing more shallowly. And you're gonna see my pulse oximetry is gonna go down because I just don't, I want to show you that whatever I'm doing is going to get my pulse oximetry down. So I'm going to do that while I talk to you. So basically, these little tiny studies or these little individual cases cause people to misreport, to misrepresent, and to cause panic. And that's not a good thing, okay? A lot of these studies are not peer-reviewed. They generalize to many different things. Um, a popular news anchor in America has said masks are not healthy, they cause, um, they cause side effects, they don't even help against the disease. The study she was quoting was about cloth masks. Now, even from the very beginning of corona, see now I'm down to 96% because I'm not breathing deeply. So you see it went down 2%, so that's very significant. 
So basically what's going on is manipulation. So, um, so basically this newscaster is telling people, oh, masks don't even help, so why are we wearing them? And it's a violation of our rights. And she's going around doing this. And if you actually look at what she has you know, looked at, she's talking about cloth masks. Now from the very beginning of this disease, it has been very well known that cloth masks were not as effective as surgical masks. These, oops, these simple surgical masks, okay, that I wear, that a lot of people wear, are the best disposable mask available, and they are effective. Now, the data has been there. It's been there for a very long time. Um, there was political intercourse somewhere in the middle where the politicians didn't want people um, buying them because there weren't enough. So they said, make your own. And then they studied that and they determined that those don't help nearly as much, but it's still better than nothing. And it does contain your respiratory droplets to a certain extent. So she extrapolated from that, that masks didn't work. And it's not true. It's talking about cloth masks. And it's talking about disease transmission when exposed to the disease which is not what the mask is about. So it's a completely biased report. The mask is about containing your own respiratory droplets. If you put your hand here, okay, which is, you know, obviously the hand is not like a foolproof anything, you will block your respiratory droplets to a great extent. Of course, your hand is now contaminated, so I don't recommend that ever. But anything in front of your nose and mouth is going to help. So her allegation is not true. And that leads us to a third point, which is, does wearing masks and having regulations violate our, our freedoms? And the answer is, sure, absolutely. Someone telling you what to do violates your freedom. Someone telling you, you must have an immunization before going to college, which is the law in America, that violates your freedom. You have the right not to get immunized but you don't have the right to infect other people, so then don't go to college, you understand? So when it comes to public health, there are exceptions. This is the way laws have been built throughout the ages. When there's a public health crisis, we all have to reduce our freedom to protect the community and the greater good. That's just the way it is. So, when you're looking at these articles, I have a few tips. Number one, look at the sources. Look at the articles. If the article was done and they're quoting something that was not peer reviewed, not written in a legitimate journal, not written um, with any kind of large sample. Oh, they studied 10 people. What does that matter? There's 14 million people who have COVID. What does 10, 10 people have to do with anything? Look at who's writing the article. Okay, a lot of people, um, the people who provide good analysis should be people who are experienced working in public health, epidemiology, emergency planning, on the medical side, not just logistics, but the medical side of emergency planning, pandemic planning. Um, I've worked in all these areas, but these, this is what you need to look at to understand who is talking to you. Uh, journalists, when they're writing, there should be a little red flag that comes up automatically because they have an agenda. In Israel, we've had a huge amount of fake news. It has not gone away. The journalists keep miscalculating the numbers. Uh, we've had situations where they've come out with crazy numbers because they are double counting some of the numbers that are coming out. And it's not accurate. And that's part of what we do on our WhatsApp group is we give you accurate information. Because if you read the, the press, you're gonna panic because they don't know what they're doing. The people writing the articles don't know anything about epidemiology. They don't understand the numbers. They just, they just spew it back out in a way that is not comprehensible, okay? They want headlines, they want conflict, they wanna get promoted, they want clicks, but they're not analysts and it's not accurate. So these are some tips that I want you to think about when it comes to looking at these, this fake news. Um, Masks have been shown to reduce the transmission of disease. Whether we like them or not is a different issue. I only think really that bank robbers like masks. Uh, maybe Purim, we like some masks. 
Um, but it does help, okay? And that has been shown in studies. Um, do we love them? No. Do we need them? Yeah, we do. So don't, don't believe all this stuff. The other thing I have seen is I've seen people quote OSHA. OSHA is the Occupational Safety and Health uh, Administration in America. Um, OSHA is not a medical body. They are literally there to help people have safe work environments. Has nothing to do with corona. Zero. OSHA regulations have nothing to do with disease transmission. It has to do with dust particles and exposure to asbestos and things like that. That is not a valid study. That is not data that is gonna help. So look at your sources, know who's writing it, know what their agenda is, and stay smart. I hope this has been helpful. This is Dr. Eliana Aaron, and please take care of yourselves.